It's the unhappy hour. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to a very, 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 very special episode of the unhappy hour. However, just like when LeBron decided to come back to Cleveland, today's episode is called the happy hour. Welcome. Why might that be? Oh, I don't know. Only the best ratings ESPN has ever received. Yes, the Ohio State Buckeyes have won the first ever college football playoff national championship. Kudos, fellas. Kudos. I'm telling you, this is amazing, and that is why my voice might be just a little bit shot. But I do want to say a quick thank you. If you guys are ever out in Los Angeles and you want to watch a Buckeye football game at, a, at a, an establishment, you need to go to Happy Ending. It's up on Sunset by La Brea. It's an amazing Buckeye backer bar, and I want to say thank you to the gentleman that surprised both my girlfriend and myself by picking up our tab. The gentleman was flying in, and he was standing around us. We were at the bar, and he was by the side of us. And just talked a little bit. I gave him my, my card, said, hey, I do a sports radio show. Check it out sometime. And I'm like, man, I'm so glad you found this place. Of all places, this is one of the best spots I've ever been to to watch a Buckeye game. It's incredible. Um, got to talking, and at the end of the night, the bartender said, hey, I just want to let you know, um, that gentleman that was standing by you, he didn't want you to know, but he picked up your tab. I was like, oh, my. So, hey, thank you very much. Uh, much love to, from, from Buckeye Nation and back out to Buckeye Nation. Oh, what an incredible day. What an incredible game. And who better to bring in than multiple, multiple, multiple Emmy Award winning sportscaster John Tellich from Fox 8 Cleveland. We're going to talk about the Buckeyes right now. You notice my voice is a little hoarse? Good evening. How you doing? Oh, John, how do you think I'm doing? My voice is uh, hoarse, it's it's sore, <laughs> it's raspy, and, and I'm drained in a fantastic way. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. No uh, complaints whatsoever. How could... Enjoying a Tuesday on the North Coast. <laughs> how is the weather <laughs> over there right now? What's that? How is Sorry. the weather over there right now on the North Coast? Uh, I think... It's... I think it's. Uh, I haven't been outside of the building in a little bit, um, but I think it's about uh, about 20 degrees. Oh so, lord! You know. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Uh, so, so you're not gonna be doing any extreme, any extreme running or lifting or hiking or jogging or uh, triathlonic <laughs> activities today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was out there today. It's you know, on days like today, you really get you get a good, you get a great workout, and you just, and you and, and it actually gives you a better mindset because you know you're going out to get your work in huh. and get something done and so you know the elements don't really detain you or deter you and you just do your thing so it's not a bad you know not a bad sign to just hop out the get out the door start the start your watch and get moving yeah it can, you know? it can feel like breathing daggers sometimes i know in my uh <laughs> brunswick blue devils when we played in all of our football games i played defensive end and uh every game we played was uh raining every game was raining except a couple yeah. of the playoffs that were snowing we had a blizzard game against maslin and we beat them seven to six and yeah there's nothing like being out there competing but yesterday we they were in jerry's land they were in uh yeah. cowboy stadium under the bright lights and I'll tell you what, this this is the cherry on top of a season that has just been anything but expected, and I couldn't be more proud of the Buckeyes, and I, I had to bring you in today to get your take on, on sure. what what you saw yep. from them last night and the season in general in hindsight now. You got it. I'll be happy to do it. So what what is the takeaway after yesterday's game? I, what, is, what is the – the, pre the prevailing opinion for you. I mean, are you blown away by the running game, the play calling, the coaching, the the third string quarterback? I mean, what stands out to you? What stands out the most for me is that in in a game that would showcase two teams that have some pretty darn good speed, one team that plays with a, 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 
a tremendous deal of uh, confidence and up-tempo, uh, obviously we're speaking of Oregon, against another team that's got enough speed athletes in it but plays the game up front with just a little bit more physicality. And I think that's what I took away the most. Ohio State, as that game went on, because they were so physical, the big uglies got the job done up front and gave Zeke uh, so much room to run for his 200, almost 50 yards. And so I think they, they took the heart right out of the Ducks. And, and I think a reason why they were able to do that was, obviously the defense was just spectacular to hold – uh, Mariota and the guys to just 20 points. That's that's phenomenal what they oh, did. Yeah, yeah. But they were aided so much also by that offense that every time they went out there on the field, they were able to stay on the field. They won the time of possession thing by a lopsided margin, and they stayed on the field and they just kind of enforced their will on um, on the Ducks. And so it turned out to be kind of like a a big night for the big uglies, you know. And that's kind of what football. Uh, Big Ten football has been about for the most part over the years. It's become more, you know, uh, of a spread game, you know, because everybody else is doing it. But there still are some kids that just like to strap it on and just beat the the, the Snickers right out of you, and that's what the Buckeyes' offensive and, and defensive lines were able to do last night. Yeah, and, and that, that three yards in a cloud of dust thing that the, the Big Ten used to be <laughs> known for, uh, you know, there's just the ground and pound kind of deal. Uh, you know, right. in previous seasons under Trestle, you know, LSU and uh, Florida, it, Florida. It, it, it really looked different. It just outclassed in speed, just kind of in yep. over their heads. Um, it, it, it really didn't seem that way. Yes, it was. It was a weird game, though. I mean, that first drive that Oregon had the ball, they the the ball hit the turf twice, and we couldn't get it. They marched down and get a touchdown. You go, what the heck kind of game is this going to be? And and the Buckeyes turned the ball over four times. Talk about the resiliency of you know having the, those mental lapses, letting the ball hit the ground, yeah. but but not letting well, it had, kill you in you typical car, Ohio car, fashion. Like Cardio lost his mind on on that one play, which which was kind of like what uh, Jameis Winston did in the semifinal. You know when Florida State lost uh, in their contest to Oregon, when he he had the turnover in Oregon and took it to the house. Kind of the same type of a scenario where. Cardinal lost control of the football. But I thought I really thought in a game like that, when you have a celebrated athlete that comes onto that field and and just marches down the field, sprints down the field in that first series and and scores first, I thought, all right, this is going to be a night where we're either going to see a lot more of that from Marcus Mariota or Ohio State's going to get their act together and take some of what he does well away from him. And they did that and, and so we come to the stage of the game where, what was it? It was 21-20? Okay, it's 21-20, and now, you know, the Bucks are on their heels and what have you. And uh, <clears throat> they got that football, and that's where the big uglies just said, you know, let's, and, and when I say big uglies, they also mean Cardale, because, I mean, my God, the oh, kid's yeah. 250 pounds himself. But, I mean, they just crunched their way down that field, and they got that touchdown to make it a 28-20 to game, and that was – that was when you say, all right, Ohio State's a little bit more in command here, but tonight is the night where a Heisman guy can really make his mark. Will he do, will Marcus do what Jameis has been able to do, was able to do in, in, in other uh, you know, national, team, uh, national uh, championship encounters? And he was not able to do it. And he's, he's a special player. He's very, very good. And, and, and I understand he's just an outstanding young man and all of that. But last night, Ohio State just did not give this kid an opportunity to, to, to do his thing. Now, I know he had some plays that obviously Duck fans would love to have back. I mean, he had that pass, uh, what was it, to Stanford? He dropped it, boom. You know, that's a 30-yard play, oh, and yeah. your drive is still alive. And, and, but still, you can, you can point to a play here or a play there. Ohio State can look back at this game and point towards four turnovers, and they scored 42 points. If it were not for those four turnovers, or even let's just say they had one turnover, my goodness, they could have approached 60 points against a, an Oregon Ducks football team. That's just astonishing to even 
to try to process that this, they were, this they felt potentially like potentially could have done that. Well, it felt like it could have been a blowout. It felt like we were in a blowout that kind of wasn't happening. I don't, I don't know how yeah. better to describe that. It, it was a blowout, but the score wasn't reflecting it. Um, yeah, it was really weird. It was just like when Urban was at the press conference last week uh, or a week and a half ago, whatever it was, and he said, hold on. Oregon beat Florida State by how much? Whew, I need to go back to work. You know, yeah. it, you know, it was a funny line, but really, we could have blown them out by the same margin, um, except for those turnovers. But, I mean, really, it, it was a mentally tough team, and you have to have that. Have you ever, in, in your time covering sports, John, have you ever seen a third-string quarterback uh, take a team to a title? I mean, on high school, college, professional? No, I never have. And that's why this is just such – an incredible story and what makes it even more uh special to me is that you know it's one of our northeast ohio kids oh yeah and and i thought was really special is today the scene at that news conference you had two northeast ohio boys uh because i refer to them because every kid is you know he's just a young boy when when we cover him on football on on fox eight two of these young kids standing on either side of that trophy with the coach behind them and these were two roommates, and I'm talking about Tyvis Powell and uh, Cardell Jones. They're two roommates who a year ago were sitting on a couch watching that same game play out and wondering if, you know, that could ever be them. And then here they are, fast forward a year later, and they're not only big players in the game. Tyvis was the defensive MVP. They are, you know, they're standing there with this trophy. They're the champions. It, it's just, and you never would have predicted that in a thousand years. I remember going to the Ginn Academy a couple of times to do pieces on Cardale and sitting in Ted's office and chatting with him. I'm real good friends with this man and I, I, I totally respect all that he is about. That has to be fascinating. He, he, tur- he, turns, he turns young lives around. What he, what he deals with is in, in shaping young lives and, um, and I just respect the world of this guy. And so he, we're in there chatting about and about uh, Cardale, and and he's telling me his backstory, and 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 just how it's almost miraculous that the kid's even at school and is doing and and is uh, uh, you know trying to get straightened out and uh, continue along the path in sports. In a, in a bullet point, I, John, I, John, in a bullet point, what what is his backstory? I well, obviously just, a rough. You know, I don't want to get. I don't, oh yeah, very yeah. Rough, okay. you know, No, no male influence. Um, around, you know, or just a, around a lot of bad influences as a little boy could have really steered him in the wrong, the, the wrong direction. And, uh, you know, was able to be um, cultivated in the sporting life and, and at least brought along that path as opposed to a more uh, destructive one. And so, uh, and, and Ted's got story after story of, of the, the kids that he has had at his academy or kids that had played at Glenville underneath them or ran track for him or what have you that were that are those kinds of stories. And so that's what Ted deals with all the time. Now, sure, these kids uh, have great um, physical skills and all of that sort of stuff, but, you know, Ted's wondering some days, you know, which kids he can count on to even come to practice because of what's going on in their personal life or right. maybe – uh, they did something wrong, and and he has to deal with them in the in the, the the penal system and what have you. So that's why I respect Ted. But I mean, Cardale is just a, a, a great. He was shy, uh, um, you know, a kind of uh, uh, kept to himself to a degree. And and but he's just got that warm smile, great heart, and uh, a outstanding young man. And he's just turning into be a, a, a football talent. That it's just. At this point in time, it is very enticing and very exciting to think about what he ultimately can become as a, as a football player. And, and I know he will go on to play in the pros. I'm not sure if he'll, he'll choose to do it this year. He sounded today in the news conference that he didn't know if he was ready and all that sort of stuff. But someday, whenever that day is, uh, he's got the gifts to be able to do it. And that's why it's going to be exciting to see how his career 
uh, where his career takes him. Yeah, and, and he's apparently a, a brand new father as well. And I mean, this is the same Carnell yeah. Jones that that tweeted out what made its way into textbooks on what not to do yeah. in social media. I ain't come to play school. Uh, it's like, oh, God. I remember two years ago seeing that going. All right, this was after the Trestle debacle. Getting that, reading that headline, going, yeah. are you kidding me? This is the type of person Urban's recruiting. But like Urban said, to his credit, if Cardale hadn't changed, he wouldn't be on this team. Um, and, and exactly. you get the sense that he really has matured, and he's still a young kid with plenty of time to go, which leads me to next year, and, I, and I'll let you get going here in just a minute, just a couple quick sure. questions, John. Um, what, what do we do at quarterback next year? I love that this is our problem. It's unlike the, the opposite of the Browns. Uh, my girlfriend yeah. yesterday, when the game got to one point, she's like, relax, baby, this isn't the Browns. I'm like, oh, okay, right. yeah, okay, good point, thank you. I, I like that perspective, um, but but this is a good problem to have. Unlike the Browns, who never have a good quarterback, w- what right. do we do next year? Is it, what is your hunch? If if you had to guess, is Braxton leaving? Do we keep the three headed beast? Does Cardale go after the money and go in the mid rounds? What do right. you think is going to happen at QB? Well, I it, my my feeling right now is that Cardale decides to stay, and that. Um, Braxton is going to have to come to grips with exactly w- w- how his skill set will translate to the next level. And so uh, I'm wondering if he stays and doesn't you know, go to any one of these uh, supposed landing spots that have been rumored, um, he stays in Columbus. And you can have more of a Cardale slash um, Braxton attack on the offensive side of the ball and JT Barrett is you know JT is still coming along from his injury so you're still going to have those three guys but I could see where Braxton would get a lot of playing time but your main quarterback I I think this kid from Glenville ultimately sets them up to be the most successful on the offensive side of the ball because his arm is such a weapon I mean you see how fast he gets rid of that yeah. ball and how it just sings out there you have to and I'll provide you do have talents like Devin Smith uh, racing to the football you have to respect every square inch of that football field when Cardale Jones is um, is is at the helm and you don't necessarily have to for Braxton he's never been known as a great thrower heck I don't think he's even allowed to start throwing until late summer of this year anyway so um I think your best bet is is Cardell Jones as your starting quarterback, and or even have he and JT battle it out, kind of like what they did this summer after uh, you know word was coming out that that you know, you know Braxton was having difficulties uh, and might not potentially be with this team. I just think it's just just a phenomenal story that your your guy that was you know the two time Big Ten offensive guy of the oh, yeah. year coming back doesn't even play it down. You throw it to this other kid who steps in and and is fifth in the Heisman balloting, and then he gets hurt, and now you go to a kid who's basically just been there, got his act together only within the last 365 days in terms of attitude and, and commitment, and then this kid goes out and plays like this is the first game of the year against Akron University or <laughs> Kent State. And, but this, these are three of the biggest games that the – Schools played in the last so many years. It's just mind-boggling. Nobody could have written a script. Heck, you're out there. People should have been writing scripts. To this effect. There probably are scripts out there that nobody bought, but this is a <laughs> true life story. Yeah, you know? I don't know that most Ohioans would have bought this story, but really, that, that Michigan <laughs> State win was an enormous statement. It was an enormous statement saying we're here, and then wrapping up with Michigan, breaking the ankle, and getting rid of JT Barry, you just went, oh, you got to be kidding me. What Cardale did, putting up 59 in that Big Ten conference title right. game and 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 the defense pitching a shutout leapfrogging the horned frogs to number four knocking off bama taking down the ducks in convincing fashion both alabama and the ducks along yep. with wisconsin and, and michigan state when it counted the most the buckeyes really stood up and proved themselves to be champions and this is my last question for you john sure. all, all of this yes it's it's a storied franchise yes uh the, the, 
you know, there's an infrastructure there, but we're only a few years into the Urban Meyer era, and, you know, he has his recruits, and there's still a couple players from the previous. Yeah. I mean, just to talk specifically, now they're asking Urban Meyer if he wants to go to the NFL, and of course, I went to Bowling Green, and he said, no, 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 I'm staying here, until he got the check, and he went to Utah in a heartbeat, so I'm not holding my breath on Urban staying with the Buckeyes, but what do you think about Urban's likelihood of staying with the Buckeyes for a long time, and just talk to me generally about what you saw uh, in resilience out of this team and the coaching staff and Tom Herman that uh, le- leads you to believe that that Urban might have given us one of the best coaching performances in any sport in any season ever. It really has uh, was a, a, a coaching job that's just unparalleled for him to do what he did in terms of the JT Barrett being uh, hurt and then Cardell going in. Just absolutely phenomenal. So you know, my hats off to him. What are you know? What is going to uh, transpire for Urban? I still think you know there could be somewhere in the back of his mind um, the the thought process that he would like the challenge of the NFL. But I don't think that is anything that he's thinking about now. I'm sure he answered the question in in a professional manner because it was asked. But I think he is he, he's so in love with the situation, the kids and what has been built in three short seasons in Columbus that I don't think he's even thinking about, you know, beyond this. And now, does that mean he's going to rifle off 10 more years at the home of the Buckeyes to the ripe old age of 60 and then, you know, try to go to the pros? Then I don't know. But I, I just get the sense that he is absolutely in love with the environment, the situation, the kids, the university, um, and all that's you know, Ohio State football stands for that he isn't even thinking about uh, anywhere beyond. He's he's just built a, a great staff, and uh, a good case in point is what he had on the defensive side of the ball coaching. You know, uh, much maligned Luke Fickle. Um, right, you know, former head coach. Ripped, you know, and he sucks and get rid of him, and what's he still doing in Columbus, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, he answered all the critics, he and, and Mr. Ash, they – answered all the critics on uh, last evening and uh and so you 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 say that that's great for luke well it's also great for urban meyer because he's the guy that's you know presiding over this coaching staff he is the guy that i'm sure has worked with luke and has worked with uh the defensive coaches in and polishing uh their methods and their methodologies and what have you and so he's just built a phenomenal atmosphere there in Columbus, and I don't see any reason why uh, this team is is not going to be in the conversation once again uh, next year. I, I just can't see anything but with the embarrassment of riches that they have at the most important position on the football team. Yeah, I, I love that we have three quarterbacks that were better than all of Al- than Alabama's starter. It, it's just, it's just really <laughs> incredible when you break it down. And I'll tell you what, you, you just gave me an interesting point that I have not heard brought up uh, thus far, and it really is Luke Fickle, former head coach in that horrible transition. Was it six and seven year? Missed the t- yeah. t- just a lot, and, and he stayed on. He could have he could have left. He could have you know Urban could have kicked him out too and brought in his own person. True, but he wanted he him there and he stuck it out. And yes, the Buckeyes defense has been a bit of a roller coaster over the past few years. But when it counted, fifty nine to nothing scoreboard. When it counted, Heisman Trophy candidate Mariota giving up twenty points against Alabama and Mari Cooper. I mean, you just look at it. They they came through and Urban with all of his offensive prowess couldn't have done it without a strong defense and Luke Fickle I think you're you're spot on with that very underappreciated this year and I'll try to give him some love as well cuz I I, th- I think <laughs> I, I think his his he earned it this year with his performance and I need to remember that when I keep talking about the Buckeyes moving forward but John hey as always buddy I really appreciate your time uh hopefully sure we'll, we'll have another championship to celebrate soon I heard LeBron's coming back who knows maybe Cardale will be on the sidelines uh with his arm <laughs> around LeBron tonight but he's back and he'll be in LA in a couple days and maybe the Cavs will get it to around and this will be another storybook season I can bring you in to talk about that one but hey for now I, I always appreciate your time and we'll be talking with you again soon okay great good talking to you too you guys have you have a great one and you know, I always enjoy chatting with you hey go Buckeyes <laughs> okay talk to you. Right, Bye-bye. see you John there goes John Telich everybody follow him he's at John Telich 8 Seriously, he's he's one of the best in the business, and you got to check out what what he's doing and what he's up to. And I'll tell you what, the Buckeyes are really the best in the business right now. It's it's just a great 
day to be alive. If if you've listened to my shows before, you're aware of the fact that I don't normally sound like this. Um, hey, coming to you, the New American Media dot com. I don't do radio guy voice very well, although I could try. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't do too many impressions. I used to do Billy Mays. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bust out any impressions. I'm just saying, if you can't tell, my voice is just sore. It is. Uh, my my throat is sore. My vo- voice is hoarse, and I, this is just an amazing day. I, I'm I'm like like kind of floating is the best way to describe it. Um, there's nothing like your first championship, and that's what Jim Tressel and Maurice Claret and Craig Krenzel and everybody brought us back in, what was that, 02? Um, that overtime win against Miami, that was amazing. This one was just fantastic. John was saying about, uh, you know, there should be a script. I, I, I think this season could get a script. You had the the untimely death of Costa Cara, George. Um, oh, what's that boy's name? Um, I'm sure you've seen that video by now. When, um, where is it at? On Ohio State, uh, the 15-year-old, well, let me, let me pull this up real quick. What's, what's that gentleman's name? Um, yeah, I'm gonna find it for you. I don't know if you've seen the ESPN special that they did with the Buckeyes, and it's this boy, where is he? Oh, there he is, okay, uh, Ohio State fan Jacob Jarvis. Oh man, get out get out your Kleenex and watch this. It is just so neat. It's on our Twitter feed. We're at American underscore media underscore. Go on our Twitter feed and watch the it's it's about what was it, four minutes, fifty-five seconds. It's about about five minutes. Jacob Jarvis, fifteen year old kind of taken under the wing. Uh the Urban Meyer and the Ohio State team just this this could very well be a story. This could be a Hollywood script, a movie. You know, remember the Titans thing with the adversity and the growth and the maturity of this team and the, the struggles they faced. And I mean, that Jacob Jarvis, man, yes, yes. It'll bring a tear to your eye in a good way. Just an amazing year. And I, I felt like this was a team of destiny. I, I had a very, I had a sense of calm. Of course, when it got to one point, it was very tense and four turnovers, you're yelling. But but I had this sense of it's going to happen. It's it, this team is destined for a championship. So, um, anyway, special thanks to John Tellich for joining us in the program. Special thanks to that unnamed gentleman that picked up our tab last night. Seriously, Buckeye Nation, buddy. We're going to pass that along. And and you guys should pass it along, too. Anywhere you go, pass along some Buckeye love. Check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. Do a search, The New American Media, on Facebook and like the page. Subscribe, youtube.com slash The New American Media. I'm Brian Engelman signing out for the TNAM Radio Network. I appreciate you, I love you, and peace. The Unhappy Hour on the New American Media.com.